There is a genre of book called the counterfactual novel, which posits what if Hitler had won the Second World War or what if Kennedy had not been assassinated and then goes on to posit an alternative history of the world, which is still plausible. It's not science fiction, but it shows an alternative route for history. And I wanted to do that for the young British artist. The first time I laid eyes on Ian Randall Timkins, better known to the world as simply Randall, the most celebrated and reviled artist of the 90s and noughties, was at the opening of his degree show at Goldsmiths in the summer of 1989. I went to the show not because I had any interest in up-and-coming artists. I was a trader at life in the city, and the only art on my bedroom wall was a framed and signed poster of supermodel Cindy Crawford, but because of a woman I knew. The book is about art and money and friendship and rivalry and betrayal and love and vampires. They moved as if into a gale, arms up to protect their faces. People were slipping on the paint now and I helped up a woman who had gone to ground. She had paint on her dress and in her hair the yellow glooped into the strands like some vicious alien ectoplasm. The eye was drawn to each fresh burst of yellow. Who was hit? Who was hit? Was I hit? People were sobbing and cowering. A man's voice, plummy and shrill, was repeating, It's just paint! It's just paint! over and over. Other people were yelling for Randall to stop, or for others to stop him. There's one story that was a really important spark for the book, which was... The quite famous story about the critic John Ruskin and the painter Turner. When Turner died, Ruskin discovered a stash of pornographic drawings or sketches done by the great landscape painter that he was so horrified by and so keen for them never to be made public that he, so the story goes, made a big bonfire of them and burnt them. What on earth could be the equivalent of that? What could someone like Coons or Richard Prince or Damien Hirst or Tracy Emin produced that could possibly shock anybody. And the book and one strand of it is an attempt to answer that question. I think it's fair to say that anybody who could possibly be offended by them, by what they show and what they seem to say, is in there, she said. She closed the folder and put it back in its drawer. Are they good, though? he said, and he heard the husk in his voice, how it nearly gave way to something else. I mean, these are good, but could he paint? Really? Oh, he could paint all right. Then quietly, some of them are quite magnificent.